I'm Clarice Warner, the girl with the pearls, the founder and education director of the Professional Reimbursement Network, LLC, where coding education is key. And on this channel, we provide you with information, tips, and strategies on how to become a certified marketable medical coder. If you are new to our channel, welcome. Please feel free to review our videos, like our videos, comment on our videos, and by all means, subscribe to our channel if you find something of value. We would love to have you as part of our community. Have you ever had a passion for something? Well, recently I've had the passion for politics. Yes, politics. And I guess it started with me becoming a delegate in my component state association with the American Health Information Management Association or AHIMA. This year, I was provided the opportunity to attend Hill Day and it was a great experience. And I just want to share a little bit about the Hill Day experience with you. On March 25th and 26th, delegates from all 50 states gathered in Washington, D.C. to visit our respective elected officials. I had the opportunity to visit with a member of Senator Rob Portman's staff, a member of Senator Sherrod Brown's staff, and probably almost everyone in Representative Steve Shabbat's office. I also got an opportunity to meet with him personally as well. As you can see, the elected officials showcase their pride in their states and the communities that they represent. Well, we had several topics that we discussed with the elected officials. But before I get into that, first, let me tell you a little bit about the elected officials. Rob Portman is a Republican senator from Ohio. He sits on the Senate Finance Committee, the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, the Senate Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs Committee, the Joint Economic and the Joint Solvency of Multi-Employer Pension Plans Committee. He has been with the U.S. House of Representatives 1993 through 20. 05. He has or was a U.S. trade representative from 2005 to 2006 and a director of the Office of Management and Budget from 2006 through 2007. He's from Terrace Park and he's a lawyer. Rob Portman also sits on the Human Rights and Global Women's Issues Committee. Democrat Senator Sherrod Brown, also from Ohio, is on the Senate Agricultural, Nutrition, and Forestry Committees, the Senate Banking, Housing, and Urban Affairs Committee, the Senate Finance Committee, the City Senate Veterans Affairs Committee, and the co-chair of the Joint Solvency of Multi-Employer Pension Plans Committee. He also sits on the Healthcare Committee. He is from Cleveland and is a college instructor, and he has been in the Ohio House from 1975 to 83, he's been Ohio Secretary of State, 1983 through 91, and he has been on the U.S. House of Representatives, 1993 through 2007. And lastly, we have Republican Representative Steve Shabbat from Ohio. He sits on the House for Urban Affairs Committee, the House Judiciary Committee, and the House Small Business Committee. He also sits on the court's Intellectual Property and the Internet Committee, and Crime, Terrorism, and Homeland Security Committee. Steve Shabbat is from Cincinnati, and he is a lawyer and a teacher. He has been a member of the Cincinnati City Council in 1979. He was also on council in 1983, um, 1985 through 1990. He was a nominee for the U.S. House in 1988, and on the Hamilton County Board of Commissioners, 1990 through 1995. The U.S. House of Representatives, 1995 through 2009. So briefly, let's talk about the issues. The first one is to encourage note sharing with patients in real time. So for more than 20 years, Congress has prioritized individuals' access to their health information as a key means to improve care and enable research and empower Americans to live healthy lifestyles. Well, several laws from the Health Insurance and Portability and Accountability Act of 1996, or HIPAA, 
to the 21st Century Cures Act have incentivized patients to have access to their health information. Our pervasive culture in medicine has kept real-time access of notes from getting into the hands of patients, despite the numerous benefits of sharing notes with patients in real time. The vast majority of hospitals and physician offices do not engage in systematic note sharing. So AHIMA's recommendation to Congress using its oversight authority to promote efforts such as open notes, the Medicare and Medicaid payment programs, including the Promoting Interoperability Programs, the MIPS Improvement Activity, performance category, and other innovative payment models so that the practice of note sharing benefits patients nationwide. Next is align HIPAA right of access with the ONC's health IT certification functionality. With all the laws that we have for access to patient information, individuals' ability to access and use their health information continues to be a challenge and AHIMA recommends lawmakers to revise the definition of the designated record set and require certified health IT to provide the amended designated record set to patients electronically while maintaining computability. Further regulators should develop guidance and request regular feedback from stakeholders on continued barriers to delivering this right under HIPAA. This revision will provide clarity and predictability of what constitutes the designated record set to both providers and patients. Next is the patient matching. Since 1999, Congress has prohibited the use of appropriations by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services to promulgate or adopt any standard or unique health identifier until legislation is enacted specifically approving the standard. This limitation has been included in every subsequent appropriations bill since fiscal year 1999 and is often seen as a barrier to public-private sector collaboration and accelerating and scaling effective patient information and matching solutions. And AHIMA requests to Congress is to omit the 1999 language in the fiscal year 2020 appropriations legislation to empower HHS to work with industry to advance a nationwide patient matching strategy. And lastly, extending HIPAA's individual right of access to non-covered entities. Again, with all the rules and laws, the ability of individuals to access their health information continues to be a challenge. This challenge has only compounded in recent years with the proliferation of mobile health and health social media applications, which are typically not covered by HIPAA's right of access. Such technologies are example of HIPAA's non-covered entities. While Congress has passed several policies in the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and has implemented a host of programs to improve patient data access, patients find that they have little access to and control of their health information collected by most HIPAA non-covered entities, such as Fitbits and other health apps. AHIMA recommends that lawmakers develop or directs HHS to define HIPAA non-covered entities in law and at a minimum extend HIPAA's right of access to non-covered entities. The goal of such a policy is to create a uniform data access policy for individuals using technology developed by an entity that produces and or manages their individually identifiable health information, regardless of commercial or legal status. So that was what we did on Hill Day. We took these issues to our elected officials and had uh, 15 to 20 minute conversations with them. Most of them were really interested in the non-covered entities because that was kind of relatable. Everyone could relate to that and how that could potentially affect their constituents. It was a great time. Even though it was quite busy on the Hill, there were all kinds of um, activity and uh, lobbying going on on that particular day. And um, I believe the Mueller report came out. So there was some uh, additional voting that was going on. And um, the Capitol Hill was actually uh, closed off for a bit with security because I believe um, 
there was some other dignitaries and officials that were were on the hill. So it was quite busy and it was really a sight to see. Um, again, it was a great time and I look forward to hearing your comments related to this. So let me ask you, is this some kind of work that you might be interested in? And if so, feel free to volunteer for your state and local American Health Information Management Association organization. If you are part of or have been part of the Component State Association, or if you are a delegate, let me know your experience in the comments below. I would love to hear um, your experiences, either past or, or present. I'm Clarice Warner, the girl with the pearls the founder and education director of the Professional Reimbursement Network, LLC, where coding education is key, providing you with information, tips, and strategies on how to become a certified marketable medical coder, reminding you to be safe, be kind, and don't wish for it, work for it. Until next time, take care.